know, it's a beautiful morning. I'm not going out with the dogs now, but I thought I'm taking the time and uh, actually just show you what I'm using for dog training, at the moment at least. Dog line, it's actually a 10 dog line. Uh, even though I only have eight dogs at the moment, um, I tend to use um, a little bit more options basically, because then I can switch around the dogs a little bit better, if that makes sense. Um, and also, especially uh, currently, one of my girls is actually in heat. She's over the, the main heat. So now the, the boys calm down a little bit more, but it's still a factor that you kind of have to think a little bit about. Uh, and luckily enough, she's my lead dog, so it is a little bit easier um, compared to if you have other dogs when other females that are you know, usually running a little bit more in the back or can't run and lead, let's put it this way, um, then the males tend to like turn around or whatever, you know. I don't have that problem that much, but uh, there are other teams out there where they have this issue. Luckily, my dogs are driven enough that they can, or I quote unquote have enough control over them that they actually do what the fuck I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always the case, but um, for the majority of times, luckily it works out, so... Anywho, uh, so, 10 dog line, uh, I'm gonna show you in a second how that looks, but first I'm just gonna attach it. Uh, my quad is super old, it's actually from 86, runs great though. Um, the, the amazing thing on it is, um, it actually is kind of like... It's a shift system, like, uh, it's like, you know, it has a shifter on it, uh, five gears. So uh, what I usually do is like, I don't really gas them up so much. I just go into eh, third gear, fourth gear or something like that. So the dogs are pulling this thing, but they get a little bit help of the engine, especially because it's going up and down a little bit. It's super tiny, but it's actually heavy as hell. So uh, in that case, uh, that works out really well for them. Uh, currently, I'm helping them a little bit more than I usually would um, because it is, um, they, they, the muscles are not built up yet, you know? So I would go out later this evening because um, it's hunting season at the moment. So I can't really go out during the day. It uh, bothers the hunters too much. And as you've seen in uh, a previous video, um, they give me all the leftovers, so if I would fuck around with them, you know, they wouldn't give me shit, so... I better, uh, be nice to those guys. So, because if I, if I drive around, they are usually, uh, pretty bothered by it. The, the, they're hunting dogs, you know, they, they could potentially run into my team, uh, which is never really good. So all those kind of factors play in. So, let's see. Got a tangle. Uh, fixing this really quick. Um, do -do 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 -do. all right. It's funny the dogs are not really reacting because they know. Oh no, they're reacting a little bit. Shh, that's good, guys. So, one important factor on every team or in every uh, setup is a bumper. There's quite a strong rubber in there uh, which helps like if that thing if the quad is going over a bump or whatever you know that the dogs don't really feel that and feel the impact and when they you know pull in that they don't have an immediate yank so uh, it's pretty important to have this one is for 12 dogs for 12 little tiny doggies so for eight dogs this one is quite fine actually I would uh, love to have two bumpers, one is a little bit stronger than one, one is a little bit weaker. So, um, so you kind of like, you know, you, you take every little yank and so out of the team. It's a little bit hard to get at times, but anyway, um, so the dogs are attached to this little rope here in the back. And then I'll show you the next shot. Uh, they have uh, the front attachment as well, but one important factor is uh, the type of harnesses that you use. I use two different types. Let's see where I find them. 
open up. There you go. We take two harnesses that are the same size, and then, hi hey guys. See, they're getting excited, those boys and girls. So, this is a normal X-Pack harness. I have quite a long line here in the back, which you don't really have to have, but I like it that way. Um, and then, the way I do it, because I don't like to use hooks and stuff like that, I just um, use a loop here, go in, and then it's called Eskimo hook, which is not really appropriate, but that's usually what they say. So I just made those myself, just some plastic that I had. It works really well. So, dog's head is here, you know, and then they pull in like that. So they, those harnesses are called X-Pack because here on the, on the back you have an X. Quite simple. But I personally, I, they work really well and the majority of people use those type of harnesses. They were actually designed for sprint dogs because when they, when they run, when they sprint, you know, gallop, uh, they actually get a little bit of a, it's the harness basically, uh, here's the back. Uh, they actually kind of get a little bit of a rebound, sort of, like, and Hippie is getting excited as well there in the back. Um, yeah, buddy, uh. Uh, so, so I basically get a little bit more like, you know, when they start to gallop in, uh, the harness has some pressure here and then they can uh, basically get more power out of it. Which in a long distance team, happy, hey, munchki. Huh? So for a long distance team, you don't want them to, to, to not gallop at all. You want them to trot smoothly. And then this actually doesn't really have any function. Um, but the majority of dogs like to run in those types of harnesses because um, especially when they're smaller, the, the pulling point is fairly low. You know, it's like that. And that works out quite well for, for their back and whatnot because the most pressure should be here. And that works out really well. The big guys though, uh, the pulling point is like this and then they get too much pressure on the hip, which is really bad. And that is why I use this type of harness. This one I actually made myself. It's the same harness as the x pack harness. I just adapted it myself. Put a spreader bar here in the back. So um, it sits lower. It sits like, you know, around the hips, uh, like here, kind of, like on the thighs. And um, it takes away the pressure on the hip. And also the pulling power is a little bit more centered. So it works the same way, looping in, you know, and then you have the pressure point a little bit lower. And that, that helps, especially the big guys. And also when it comes to heavy pulling, this is much more efficient. Um, both of them have the pros and cons. The downside on those uh, spreadable harnesses is uh, you need dogs that constantly pull because otherwise this starts to, you know, dangle a little bit. And especially when they, also when they gallop, it's like flopping around a little bit more and whatnot. This can be really distracting on dogs. And if you have a softer kind of dog, um, in particular, like for Malamutes in particular, when you have like some softy kind of females, they don't enjoy that at all. So um, bear that in mind. If you try to consider harnesses like that, um, they have, like I said, they have their, their pros. Uh, the further you are up in the team, uh, the less important it actually gets to use those kind of uh, harnesses because uh, the, the angle of the, of the pulling line is different and, uh, and also in general, like uh, they, they just have less pressure basically. But for the wheel dogs and for, for the, the ones that are closer to the quad or, you know, uh, wagon or in that later on in the season than the sled, uh, there it gets much, much more important. Um, especially because uh, uh, sleds usually have a pulling point that is a little bit lower. This one is fairly high. Don't want to have it too high because then I get a yank and a, like downwards basically and the pulling point sits a little bit too high. This is quite good actually where it sits now. So that works out anyway. Uh, bear that in mind a little bit when you think about that. So, um, 
uh, I like I said I like it I use them quite a lot but uh, sometimes especially um, when you go longer distances it's sometimes better to use the uh, X-Pack harnesses or something similar to that um, because um, over time in the beginning they maybe pull much harder you know but later on especially when you have a light sled or a light setup or whatever it's not as important but they have a little bit more free motion you know if they don't want to pull all the time they can relax a little bit more uh, and uh, they don't have like something dangling in the back it, it's less distracting some dogs go perfectly well on it uh, nippy my big guy he's always running in in, uh, in a spreadable harness uh, mainly because he's pulling way too hard. If I would use a different harness on him, um, it would impact his his hips tremendously. So, and he's a huge guy, you know, he's 71, 70, yeah, 71 centimeters. Uh, that guy, you can't put in an expect harness because it will slope to the side. It will impact his hips all the time. It's not good, you know, for that guy. A little tiny females, they can run in the expect harness without a problem. Some of the other guys, you know, especially uh, Aniruk, my, my new elite dog, uh, he's, when he's running elite, I don't put him in, an, uh, in a spreadable harness, he's running in the X-Pack, and when uh, he's going further back, then, he running, then he's running in a spreadable harness. Because he is like, constantly really pulling quite well, you know, so I don't want to mess up his hips. All right. So, the dogs are like this. They pull in. Here's the head. Then I have those little ropes here. Um, I actually have to loop them in a little bit like that, you know. Um, and then they go into the collar, in the ring of the collar, like this. Um, the reason why I do it like that is because the rope, if, uh, if we get hooked into something, like a tree or whatever, uh, that rope just snaps. Um, and um, other people they use steel line here and then uh, they have a, a like a carabine or whatever that uh, is quite weak and it, that will snap others uh, do different methods I prefer this because it is uh, easily replaceable and I always have some rope with me and then I just uh, cut it you know and just redo it because usually since I loop it around so much that one stays stay directly on the on the ring, so I can just take that one off again, and then I just replace the rope, and then uh, that's good. Um, it's a safety thing, basically. Uh, on Svalbard, when I was living there, I actually just had steel line, a hook, because there is no trees or whatever that you could potentially get hooked in. So the, there, I just wanted to make it sturdy as possible. Here. When you have trees around and whatnot, you know, and bushes and all kinds of other shit that you could potentially get hooked in, it's much better to be safe. By the way, this is steel line, which you always should use, on the main line at least. Everything else should be somewhat uh, cuttable in case you have a ball up or whatever, so you can start cutting shit. So always have a knife with you, or at least I do, or you should do, regardless. It's always good to have. This uh, line in general is quite beaten up by now. It used to used to have a cover over it, but the dogs tend to go on the line and it starts rubbing and it uh, doesn't impact them much. It's just a, an extra safety, basically. Um, they, they don't like run constantly on it. It's just like over years. It uh, basically dissolves. Um, <laughs> and I definitely need a new set. I actually had one. Uh, there were some problems with it. Uh, and uh, that was last year or so, well, maybe two years ago I actually bought it. But uh, <laughs> since then I haven't done anything. I wanted to replace this thing for ages. It still works though. Um, but it's about time to change it. Uh, because it's it's a safety thing, you know. If, they, if some, some attachment starts to go and whatnot, you know, you really have to replace them. It's not good when all of a sudden your team start moving away without you're being attached to it. <laughs> All right. Have a good one, guys.